Good morning, everyone. So next Friday, I'm heading to Texas to shoot my first total solar eclipse. So today, I'm doing a tester on a bit of gear because I'm not sure which lenses I want to use. Let me just swing these around out. So I had originally planned on bringing this piece of kit here. It's like a 1300 millimeter lens which is great for the zoomed in shots, but it might not work when the corona's on, it might be a bit too zoomed in at 1300mm. So next up is the 150 to 600, which is definitely coming with me anyway, this one. Then we have the 7200, but I've also got the 16 to 35, a star tracker just so we can track the sun, eclipse glasses, a shutter release, a couple of solar filters, and an adapter for the scope. So the thing is, I want a wide angle shot, but I don't know if 16 35 would be too wide. Maybe 70 mil would be enough. So what I plan to do is, let me swing this around again. What I plan to do is um, do a test on all these lenses while the sun is out. I don't know how long the sun is going to be out, but let's give it a go and see what happens. So let's get set up anyway. I'm going to use the sturdy tripods a bit heavy this one but it's good for taking the weight of heavy lenses you see the bits of white tape on the um, tripod there they're literally just so when I'm set up when I'm out at night time and you have the shutter release plugged in it's usually there's a long lid so it's hanging and it's dragging on the ground so I would usually just tuck it inside there like that it's just handy anyway for starters let's get this set up and we'll see where we go from there I'm hoping you can see me with the sun behind me the cloud keeps coming over I'm hoping I can get this video done I know what it looks like on the scope anyway because I shoot like that all the time but it's more the wider lenses I'm really trying to try out now now for Nora to use a star tracker you would normally pole or align it is my eclipse glasses blown away? Give me one second. I'll just cover those up. Um, to align during the day, all you need to do is I'm out my own backyard, so I know where north is. The piece that you look through, you need to point north, which is let me see, roughly around there, and just make sure the spirit level is spot on. Could come up another tiny little bit just the more accurate it is the better it will travel sorry it will track should have been down and up just a, don't want to go too much maybe drop this side down a wee bit as well That's good enough for the purposes of today's demonstration. Now, when we have a pointed north, all you have to do is put a camera on. Um, we don't have a thing on this, so let's let's start with the 7200 since it already has the head on it. No, nope, has the wrong head on it, right? The Manfrotto head is what I need. So, look, we'll start with this one sure since it's on it. Let's just get the camera out. Switch lenses. Sounds like an airplane flying over. I'm always trying to get an airplane flying by the sun, it never happens. It'll happen now that I'm not ready for it, watch. Click. Now, all I need to do here is this has a button on the side of it with a picture of a sun. I swing this around the line to the sun and then I can just uh, start tracking. Now for this, I'm just gonna take the cap off I'm also going to take the lens hood off I'm not going to need that um, I am planning on making proper solar filters well these are proper solar filters but I mean ones that will fit, fit the lens but for the minute I have one here for the telescope and this will do I can just sit that over there like that and I usually just put an elastic band or something just to hold it in place I don't know how we'll get it over this now. We normally use the lens hold to hold that on. Actually, maybe I should have done that. Let's just 
that's right. I just want to make sure it doesn't fall off. We'll try it like that. We will have the proper solar filter. Now, all you need to do is swing this around. Roughly where I need to be. Just lock that in place for a minute because the sun has gone behind the clouds. So give it a minute. A bit of cloud but it is starting to come back out so I'm just gonna mute my camera. I can actually look through the live view because I have the solar filter on. There we go, I have it there. Lock that into place. When I have that done I think the sun is centered. I just switch this to the picture of the sun. And there we go, there's my solar tracking. So handy. So when you're zoomed in, if you've got a big lens there, 600 mil, that sun's gonna drift across the shaft very quickly and you're going to have to keep moving. Sometimes you're better off with the gear head tripods with the handle that you can just turn like that much easier up and down. The ball head, you know, you could loosen it and it could slip and you have to find the whole sun again. With the tracker, it's going to track for me. I don't have to worry about any of that. So let me just get this up on live view as the sun goes behind the cloud again, typical. And I'm just going to slow my shutter speed down just so I can actually see the sun first. The cloud keeps coming in every time I try to do this bit. Of course, this is typical. It's been lovely and sunny and as soon as I come out, the cloud comes all up. So look, we'll hang on. I have my cup of tea. What we can do while we're waiting is um, check the satellite view. And it does show because I was already looking. There is clear skies coming, if you can see that. At least for half an hour anyway, should be enough for me to get a few shots. All this time I have to keep running back to the, the Osmo pocket I'm filming on here today and press the record button right on the screen there. I just realised there's a button on the microphone, I can just press that to record or stop recording like so. Would you believe we've got a few drops of rain coming so I'm after taking the camera off and I brought it inside the rest of the gear. I've just uh, thrown inside the table there for a minute. It's handy, it's just the cushions for the chairs there. So I'm just going to leave them for a minute. Um, the Osmo pocket itself is not waterproof, so I'll bring that inside as well and hopefully this is going to pass or we'll have to scrap this video. Okay, that bit of rain has passed. Let's try this again. Just uh, really quickly, let me open this chair. I need a shutter release I was talking about earlier. I'm just going to leave them covered up for a minute just in case this just goes into the side of the camera. Just means when I press the camera, it's not going to shake because I can just press it here. Remember, I was talking about the bit of tape on the leg. That's all that for to hold it in. So now switch the camera on, and let me just make sure I left me tracking on. So it's oh, it it's, it's it's actually still perfectly centered, which is brilliant. Right, I'm currently at 150 mil. So let me switch the video for one second. Uh, now I'll go back, I'll um, focus of course would be handy, so I'll just go on to my live view. And I'll zoom in times 10. And then I'll just play around with my settings. Let's say, it's so hard to see the screen, it'd be easier if I look to the live view there. So I'm going to go with FE, 100 ISO. And I'm gonna go 200 of a second for a minute. Just till I um, get my focus. This lens is weird. Most lenses, the focus ring is at the front, but the zoom is at the front, and this and the focus is at the back. So make sure this is on manual, which it is. Don't try and autofocus on this one. Don't try and look at this one. Obviously, if you don't have um, a solar filter, so let me zoom in again because it knocks itself off. And play around with the focus. Obviously, if you're going to be shooting the whole eclipse, the eclipse is at midday from where I'm going. Oh, this is my sunspots on the edge of the sun. So, because it's at midday, it's going to be really high in the sky. Okay, now we're just going to take a shot of that just by a couple of shots. And I'll just I'll switch the video for a second just so I can actually show you what it looks like. I'll put it in the video. The exposure changes completely. I'll uh, just change my sentence as a ball flying by. 
There we go. Remember, we're shooting in white light. I also have a batter solar filter here, which will shoot in the orange and yellow light. Um, this thing wasn't even tracking my face the whole time. I apologize for that. Sorry, I thought it was tracking me. Um, yeah, it shoots in white light because the sun is naturally white. It's not yellow, orange, red like people think. That's just, you see it, those colors as it gets through a tickle there, the atmosphere that scatters the blue light and allows the red light to get through. But it is, just making sure my microphone is actually on there. Okay, we have a shot, we have a bit of video. Let's stop that. Now we are gonna change the focal length. That was 150. I actually want to start at 16 and woke up. I'm just gonna go to 200 because I have the 7200. So let's see what it's like at 200 so I don't have to change the lenses. Again, I will have to live view and I will have to change my focus. I was talking earlier about the sun being straight up because it's straight up these lenses when they're so heavy these big lenses there's a chance that they can you know when you have them zoomed out all the way there's a chance they can fall back down so this one actually has a lock button on it you can lock it when it's straight up but also if you nail your focus i would recommend getting a piece of tape and just taping on so it doesn't move during the whole eclipse again i'm just waiting for a bit of cloud to pass um, obviously on a nice sunny day, I wouldn't even bother looking through there, just open up the live view and flip it around there. Because on the day it's going to be straight up. It's a Monday week, April 8th, if anybody's interested in the eclipse. From up, from Ireland you will see a tiny little bike on out the bottom of the sun, but it'll be at sunset. So if you can get somewhere out west looking out to sea with a clear horizon, you may, you may even get like a ship passing in front of it or something, which would be a cool shot. But we're not going to have a total eclipse in Ireland until the year 2090. So um, this is why I wanted to see it from here. I'm just going to take another shot there. That's a 200 mil. There's not going to be much in the difference. Now I'm going to go to let's try 400 mil, 500 mil, and 600 mil. So there's 400 mil. Again, I can get it up on my live view here. Um, and I'll just play around with the focus if I can there is a sunspot right in the corner which does make it easier to focus on but that's leaving the field of view and there's no more sunspots visible at the minute I'm hoping on the day of the eclipse there will be some it's fairly hard to see here so I'm going to increase my shutter speed on a nice sunny day it works better to have a faster shutter speed um, just hit record there again for a second to show you. You see, when I hit record, I have to change the sentence. There you go. That's a 400 mil, so it's not very big at all. But the idea is, when the sun is totally covered by the moon, see there's more cloud, you'll have the corona, which can be the same size as the moon, on either side and top and bottom. So four times that all the way around. That's why I want to go wider to pick up all that. I also want the zoomed in shot to try and pick up the filaments around the edge of the sun, any eruptions, CMEs or anything that happen. Um, I want the zoomed in shot for the Bailey's beads. It's gone boy, sounds like an airplane flying over. Uh, the Bailey's beads and then I'm also after the diamond ring effect which will be a much faster shot. So when, um, when you're shooting you'll have your eclipse glass on the whole time until the sun is completely covered then you can take the eclipse glasses off and you need to change your shutter speed either faster or slower depending on what you're after. The airplane's gone behind me there. Now, more cloud. It's typical, isn't it? But look, this is Ireland. <laughs> um, there's also a good chance it's going to be cloudy on the day in Texas as well. But if you look, we'll find out soon enough. I really hope it's not. I'm, I'm fairly jinxed when it comes to clouds. Maybe it's just the country I live in, but let's see how we go. I'll stop this for a minute till that bit of cloud goes by. So we're currently at 400 mil there. <clears throat> I reckon 400 mil could be good enough for the wide angle. Just bring the exposure down there so you can see it. Um, all things considered, the tracking's not too bad. It's never going to be perfect to solar tracking like than it would be like a line in the stars the night before. But even then, I'd be worried how well that would work out because you still have to switch to solar the next day. Because I thought about leaving it out all night in the accommodation we're staying in, but. I don't know if we're going to be shooting from there or not. We won't actually know till we get there and see the weather and if there's anything in the way. But um, 
Well, I'm going to take a couple of shots of this and then I'm going to switch to um, 500 mil and then 600 mil. Remember, we're shooting in white light here. I will change this to yellow in post processing. As I said, I have the other the batter filter there, which does, which does shoot in yellow light, but I find it's not as sharp as the white light. So I'm just going to up this to 500 mil now. If these shots are working out, I will post a shot in between each thing. And of course, it's gone cloudy again. If I had this, <coughs> sorry, um, if I had this tracking absolutely perfectly now, I would time lapse the whole thing over the three hours or whatever it takes from start to finish. Totality is four minutes and 20 seconds from the center line. From the accommodation where it's, I think it's three minutes and 40 seconds or something. So we're only losing out on 40 seconds and we can stay at home in the garden. There's a swim pool and everything, which would be nice, but I don't know if the trees are going to be in the way. But if it was perfectly tracking, I would do that, but it does drift off and then if you had to move it, it might ruin it. Plus, it's the thing that when the sun is totally covered, I'd be changing my shutter speed. So it might ruin the time lapse because I'll have to be touching the camera and be shaking it and all. And I'll be taking multiple shots because I'm after so many different shots. There's also a possibility I might want to go wide and see if it's possible to pick up Comet 12P Pons Brooks. They say it's going to be visible. I'm not convinced. But if it is, if you go by the 500 rule and you're at 500 mil, you can only get one second. Like if you're at 200 mil, you can get two and a half second exposure. That's all you can get. With the tracker though, I can get longer than that. Like at 200 mil, I can get a two minute shot. Obviously that'd be too bright for the sun, but just a few seconds. And also Jupiter and Venus would be around as well. And I hear the board stop singing and everything when it gets dark because they think it's night time. And I can't wait to see it now. Um, the sun is barely peeping out there from behind the cloud. It's so difficult to do this on a cloudy day. I'm just going to adjust this tracker slightly upwards just so the sun is centered just by turning this button here. And again, I'm just going to get my live view and zoom right in there so I can um, get my focus. Damn cloud. <laughs> I need a nice sunny day to do this properly. Ooh, there's a big bee flying around we had there. It's, um, it's so difficult when the cloud keeps going over. I might just knock this off and look in there because you have the digital viewfinder here. It's so good. And the thing with this, the Canon R62 I'm shooting with, if you get something in focus, it lights up red to tell you it's in focus, which is pretty cool there we go you can see that sunspot just on the western limb I still don't know what they call the western limb because from here it's um, the east side but they do it backwards for the sun I'm just gonna take this out of here for a minute the short release clear sky there we go it's lighting up red I'll take a few shots and then I'll switch the video just to show you us. And again, I have to lower the exposure just so you can see. That's nice at 500 mil actually. It's amazing, you can see the sunspots all lit up red and everything. Don't know what they'll show on the video, it's just for me looking through this, but let's switch to 600 mil now. And again, I'm just going to tweak the focus when that cloud moves. There shouldn't be much in the difference between five and 600. Um, I was reading somewhere, and I don't know how true it is because I've never photographed a solar eclipse, but I know it does work with me HA filter and all. If you have a filter on and then you take it off, right, we're at 600 there, um, your focus changes. You can take like a load of shots just by holding that like really fast. But if your focus changes and you don't realise because you can't see it through and you spend four minutes shooting the sun and it's out of focus, you won't be happy. <laughs> Again, let me just bring the exposure down so you can see it. 600 mil is nice. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bother with the scope to be honest. Also, I can enable crop mode on this camera. I might just try it there. 
when you enable crop mode you go to 1.6 crop let me just there we go and let me just have a look at that I'll show you I'll just move it slightly to centre it there a bit this cloud has gone over it again but I've enabled the 1.6 crop mode and we'll just see what the difference is but um, as much as I'd like in the zoomed in shot like I said I want to be able to pick up the corona and everything else when it's totally covered blue sky is behind me of course I'm still waiting for the cloud to pass um, what was I going to say there sorry yeah uh, I have uh, I have three cameras in my camera bag and I had originally planned on bringing them all down one wide angle one telescope shot and one with this 150 to 600 here um, the problem is as I was saying before once the sun is actually covered and you have to change settings you have to take the, fi the filter off and lower exposure or higher the exposure depending on what shot you're after for me to be trying to do that at three cameras at the same time um, like that diamond ring effect especially that's only going to last like a second if even you know what I mean so if I have to rip the filter off three cameras expose for all them change of settings I will end up missing it on all three cameras so to be honest at the minute I'm thinking I'm better off getting one good camera rather than having three shots on possible miss so I could end up doing that or I could put the 7200 on and leave it doing video but because it's not tracking I would still have to keep moving it um, we really need a second tracker. Well, I have a second tracker, but I can't bring that with me just because it's too heavy the, with the weight and the um, the tripod and the counterweights and everything. I'd never be able to bring it. This one, um, let me swing it around again there. There is a counterweight that goes on here, but I don't put it on. It goes on the back just to balance this out, but it can take the weight perfectly like this with the other one. It kind of needs it. It uh, has the go-to capabilities and all on it. But, um, it's still cloudy there so I just wanted to see what it looks like there is a gap coming there underneath that the cloud is coming at me this way like towards me sorry this way <laughs> that's coming this way so we get a shot on the 1.6 crop and uh, I don't think I need to really try the 7200 now because I've seen what's like at 200 like it's it's very small so definitely not going 70 so I'm not, I think 200 could be enough if I want to go on that. There's definitely no point point in trying to 16 to 35. That's just a waste of time. Um, if I had some landscaping with the shot, I would do that. I would like to get one. I've seen it before where you get like uh, the eclipse coming from the horizon, like all the way up. But it's going to be over my head, so I'm not going to be able to get anything in with it. I don't think so anyway, unless I get to the edge of a cliff or something. And that'd be cool if you had somebody on top maybe walking by on a horse or something would be unreal it is texas like ranches and stuff i would literally pay somebody a few hundred quid just to walk in front of the sun with a horse it would be unreal during the eclipse if it was possible um it's brightening up a bit there I might come back out we'll see what this 1.6 crop is like and i think we'll leave it there for today oh again i'm just going to check the focus Wow, that's actually really good focus as it is. Because the sun is out really bright now, I'm going to increase to say 800 of a second at FE. And I just drifted off a little bit because I've zoomed in. I shouldn't really be moving it like this, but I will. I'm just going to um, take a shot on me shutter release here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the clouds. <laughs> My God. It'll be back, it'll be back. Okay. If the cloud is there, I can just lower my shutter speed and see it better, but I kind of wanted to keep all the exposures the same, to be honest, just so I could show you in the video. Right, I'm gonna lower it back down. 400 is what I had it on for the other one, so I'll leave it at that for the minute. And might be a bit blown out. I just hold the shot release down for a minute and take a few shots and let me just uh, do it on video and again I just bring the exposure down I might even bring the shutter speed up so 
yeah that's that's lovely there that's on the 1.6 mode i'll try and put all these together at the end of the video and just compare them sorry it's shaking a bit just because i'm touching off it the record doesn't work on the shutter release you have to actually press on the button for the video um i could have switched the actual video mode and shot in like 4k but you don't need that just for the purposes of this video well, i'm just going to try 800 of a second because that's what i plan on shooting on the day and for the diamond ring i'm going to go all the way up to 2000 of a second and i might just drop my f-stop down to 6.3 looks good let me just take a couple of shots and i'll also oh it doesn't go any lower than 6.3 or 600 mil with this lens but that's fine and then your iso up if you want to go a faster shorter speed 160 Let's do one more video clip. See, when I switch the video, it's automatically overexposed. And there we have it. This is definitely the lens I'm going to shoot around the day. I may also put the 7200 at 200 mil and leave that running at the wide angle. However, I want super wide, leave it at 70. Um, the thing is because the 7200 won't be on a tracker i will have to keep running over and moving it slightly over so it won't be a time lapse as such like i could possibly get on this one but what i will be able to do is make a composite image of all the phases and blend them all together as it's disappearing into the disc is getting smaller and smaller down to a little crescent then the full exposure of the total solar eclipse itself and then the phase is coming back off the other side so yeah it was a good test um i am going to make a proper solar filter for this as well you, you just um you made them out of solar film that we bought in, uh, in k-tech telescopes actually we bought here in dublin um so where i buy most of my gear steven's a good friend of mine so i'm just gonna oh. that video is still shooting away sorry let's knock that off And get another couple of photos. 2000 of a second is pretty good. I don't think I'm going to need to go any faster than that for the diamond ring effect. So I'm happy. I'm thinking also on the day, either I'm going to be bent down looking up like this or I'll just hire the tripod to my height. I'm only small now, but still it's better to have it at head height. But you can always just do this because if it is a really sunny day and you're trying to look up even though you're looking through this you're seeing yourself you still have all the light coming in around you what i normally do when shooting on a summer's day i throw a towel over the whole kit obviously not covering the um the element that on the front of the camera or the glass i'll throw a towel over here and over my head so the sun is not getting me have it all wrapped all around here and just use it that way so would you believe I'm coming to the end of the video and it's just blue skies coming. Isn't that just typical? But look, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm going with this lens. This is what I'm going with. I just hope it's clear on the day. So that was my first video. Um, hopefully it worked out. And you like it. If so, I'll make some more. Catch you on the next one. Actually, you know, while the sun is out, I should just try the 7200, shouldn't I? So, let me just take this off for a minute, switch it off. Look, that's all I felt, that's only held on with an elastic band. But it does the trick, like I said, I will be making proper ones, but I might be meeting up with the lads today, actually. Or tomorrow and I'm just gonna switch I know I've seen what it's like on 200 and that but 200 and this could be different um, I just need to switch these base plates the Manfrotto one for the 
uh, the Arca Swiss, which I have on my other tripod. Really quickly tighten that up. The tracker is still tracking, so I don't need to worry about that. I just need to lock her in there, shut her cap is off, and I just need to, same thing again, just put the solar filter on, that's the most important thing. I'll even uh, leave the lens hood there for the minute. Just, I just need it enough to hold it and turn the camera back on. So I decided I may as well just uh, have a go at this while I'm here with the 7200 just make sure I know I had it on 200 and the other one but it's a different lens you never know it might look different will the sky is clear uh, do you know what we do take this off all together and put it on properly it might be easier to put this on might be light leaking around the side now it's not ideal but it's only as a tester here Let you see I'll just um, turn the camera slightly this way to center let me zoom in cloud again just give it a second I'll have this on autofocus so just make sure that switch to manual for a 200 mil Wow, <laughs> I had clear skies, so I decided to try this and as soon as I set it up, cloud. There's another bit of blue coming, I'm gonna give it a minute and then that's it. I decided to do one more test with the 7200 on. It's still in crop mode and I'm just going to um, again tweak my focus. That looks good, short speed is way too slow. Well, it's ISO back to 100, back up to F8 seems pretty good, and 800 of a second. It's still not as sharp as I'd like, I'm not sure if there's cloud there, it's just... Ah, there we go. I'll take it back off the focus that I had on there. Sorry, not the focus, the zoomed in I had on, and I just fire off a couple of shots. Let's do one more bit of video. Keep the exposure down. That'll be good enough for a composite as well. <coughs> I'm just going to try one more without the crop mode back on the full frame. And that's what it looks like in the full frame a 200 millimeter. I suppose while we're here we may as well try a 70mm as well, I know it's going to be way too small but you can actually see the way the filter's not on properly on the edge I've got this grim a little bit just to fix that, it will be cropped in anyway but we go there, that's that's 135mm, we're not there now I can't go on to live view while I'm on video, or to zoom in sorry I'm just going to stop the video for a second It's messing with my eyes there looking because I'm looking at the live view but again so that's at 125 mil on I think that's on full frame Let me just check, that's on full frame and I'll go to the 1.6 crop and just show you the 
different. I'm not sure what the difference actually shows up on the video. It doesn't. It shots now. But let's just take a shot. If you find it's too bright, you should just increase your shutter speed. I can't bring the ISO down anymore. It's at its lowest. Increase just to a thousand of a second there and take a couple of shots. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let me just actually, I'm just gonna center that a little bit because it is drifting off. A couple of shots here. That's it, I'm done. So, lovely and sunny now, and it's time to pack up. But um, I'm gonna compare all these photos. I think it's the 7200 Canon and the Sigma 150 to 600 is what I'm bringing with me. I can enable the crop mode and also I have a 2x adapter if I need to go anymore. But I don't think there's any need to bring the 12 day on the mill unless I want the really zoomed in shot. But as I said before, I'll end up missing the main thing, the totality, which is the main shot. I'm after that diamond ring effect and those tiny little crescents, which I'm just going to make a composite layer of. So that's it. I'm going to leave it there. Bye.